and welcome back to my personal hell everyone here we can see my failure from the last video where my lack of patience resulted in this very sad very botched paint job and yeah i basically just sat feeling sorry for myself and looking at the gusion without really knowing how i wanted to proceed I decided though that it wasn't worth it to just kind of sulk and be sad. The Gusion deserves a good paint job and I was determined to fix it. And uh, so this is kind of the redemption arc. My first step was to take all of my original colors and put them onto a wet palette. My next goal was to take the original paint base colors and to kind of try and mix them in a way that they will exactly match the colors that were already on the kit. Once I'd mixed the colors to what I believed matched the original colors the most, I just started to paint them onto the kit. The head needed the most work by far. It, it took me the longest to get the head to a place that I was happy with. But what are you gonna do? You guys were first treated to a layer of straight silver from Vallejo's Game Air line. And then after that had dried, I applied two thin coats of Phantom Glow from Reaper. It's a pretty cool color. I really like how bright it is. And, and I think it works in the overall color scheme that I went for with the Gusion. I think if I had pushed it a bit farther, I could have potentially gotten it to look like the eyes were glowing or on. But I don't really know how to do that yet. So maybe in the future. I'm definitely going to use this combo again for other things. Because it does look cool. I think it looks great. It, it's a, a color of eye that you don't really ever see. After about six hours of touching up my mistakes, I was left with this end result. You can particularly see how much work had to be done on the back. Especially on the back tail section. The, just the red was, was a complete disaster back there. And on the backs of the arms. Basically everywhere that I painted red was just, just a mess that had to be touched up on. The next step was to paint the rest of the inner frame that hadn't been painted during the airbrushing process. This is basically because they're joints and I didn't want to get paint inside the joints so that they couldn't move. So I, I paint these second. I don't really know if that's the best way to do it, but that's how I choose to do it. I gave the hands the advance of Zeta treatment, which is basically to paint the ends of them red. I like it a lot. It kind of makes the hands pop more and it works to differentiate between all of the pieces. The hands can get kind of boring. When the inner frame was done, I painted all of the joints, metallic colors, like the pistons and the mm, 
gears. I'm not really sure what goes in between the the elbow joints. Kind of looks like gears though. After the painting was finally all done, it was time to treat the Gusion to a nice bath of gloss varnish. After two thin coats of the gloss varnish, it was time to finally get on to applying decals and doing the panel lining. Decals are always a lot of fun, especially if you're working on a kit that doesn't come with any because it gives you an opportunity to basically go through all of the decals you've been saving for good reason for the past five years and, and, and to choose which ones you want and like and the ones that you think will actually work on the kit. This is my pile of shame, my pile of decals, my pile of unused stickers, my pile of fun paper. Here are the decals that I decided to use. First off were these unused decals from the Gundam Base exclusive Golf Flight type. And uh, here he is, in case any of you are wondering what, the, what that looks like. It's really cool, really cool kit. Uh, for a 144 scale kit, I was super surprised that it came with water slide decals. It's just a real pleasant surprise. Next up were these, I don't know the brand name, they're no name ones from AliExpress. And then finally, of course, we're gonna use the GOAT Delphi decals. I had no idea what decals were in this packet because they were a gift sent to me when I made my first order from Delphi decals. And it looks like they are actually holographic decals meant for the Unicorn Banshee Norn Gundam. I decided not to use these ones because I don't think holographic decals work very well on a white painted Gundam. I'm going to save them for a later time when I have a darker color. In the end, I just decided to go with these ones. Just a standard universal caution sign from Delphi. Before slapping any decals on, though, it was time to do the panel lining and accent colors, which doesn't make any sense because I'm literally just doing panel lining. Panel lining is fun. I, I really love watching the ink as it slides through the, the panels, the panel lines, the seams. I'm not sure, but, but you all know what I mean. Like, which is really fun to do. It's kind of hypnotic. Once all of the panel lining was complete, it was time to just do some quick and easy cleanup. The good thing about the panel liner and the thinner used to clean it is that they are both enamel based paints and the acrylic gloss varnish is, I don't know what it is, but it's not enamel. So the thinner won't interact with the gloss varnish and ruin any of the paint underneath or the gloss varnish itself. It's super convenient. It's probably a really good idea to wear a mask when doing this process as the enamel thinner really lets off some very strong vapors. I don't wear a mask though because I think that the enamel thinner smells really good, which might not be a very good sign. Now we take our 1000 times folded blade and get cutting those decals out of their paper. Water slides are really convenient because what you do is you cut them out and then much like when you were a child and you would get those really cheap tattoos from the fair or the exhibition, you just put them in water and then you just slap them to your kit, just like you would do on your arm, you know, with those sick friggin' Spider-Man tattoos when you were seven years old and one of your parents took you to the exhibition. Um, this, this is just kind of, I, I just want to apologize to anyone who has made it this far in the video. I am really bad at getting decals to actually sit on the model kit straight. Um, so if you find that triggering, I just want to apologize and just tell you that I'm, I'm trying to improve and one day I, I hope to get them as straight as the professionals do. So yeah, I, I apologize. I'm so sorry.
Last up, because I actually forgot entirely about these, it was time to just add some really quick weathering to the weapons. Overall, Illusion is supposed to be a clean, just a clean boy. I mean, I kind of failed with that with the paint job, but uh, when it came to the weapons, I was thinking like, you know, if he's been in battle a bunch of times, the weapons are just gonna have, they're just gonna have some nicks and necks. It's just, you know, it's just a part of the job. So I weathered the crap out of them. Also, just because weathering like this is just fun to do looks pretty good and, and it just works overall. I also gave the gun some love because honestly it's the only love it's ever going to get because I love the hammer way too much and I don't think I'll ever pose my fusion with the gun. And that is that. Here he is in all of his glory. Just clean. Well, as clean as I could get it considering how many mistakes I made, but I do think that uh, I redeemed myself a bit by going over all of the mistakes I made and adding the decals and the panel lines. I, I think in the end of the day it all came together really well and really effectively. I think he looks sweet. Here he is with his legendarily huge hammer. Ready to execute some people, like Ornstein. I don't know why you would execute someone with a hammer. This seems a bit, kind of a bit too brutal, but I don't know. What do I know? I don't know anything about the politics of being an executioner. I, I'm sorry. And lastly, here he is with his twin brother? His or original brother? I don't know, but uh, look at them, they're looking like some uh, some sort of hammer bros, which, oh my god, now that I said that, hammer bros, they are kind of turtle looking. The hammer bros are turtles. The Mario movie is coming out. This has just been a giant teaser for the new Mario movie, so now I gotta go see it. Okay, bye. <laughs>